Last time on graph theory, we took a look at the very basics of graphs. We learned that a graph can be made up of vertices and edges, and we saw some patterns like paths and cycles. Today, we're going to go along the same route, and we're going to try and learn a little bit more about the fundamentals of graphs. You're watching episode 2 of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome back to Graph Theory. So, we do know that graphs are made up of vertices and edges, but in fact, if we were to apply some constraints to how these vertices can be connected to each other, we can actually have a better time performing certain types of computation. Today, we're going to look at certain types of graphs, or in particular, a way to restrict connections in graphs that can make our life easier in certain cases. Let's start with something very simple. This graph is in fact a tree. Now, we've talked about trees before many times on this channel, and well, we know what it is. There is a root, and there are connections down to more elements, and these elements may branch out further. You may not have thought of it this way, but in fact, a tree is a kind of graph. It just happens to be restricted in a particular manner that, you know, all the nodes are connected from the top down. A graph, of course, isn't limited in this manner because you can have any old connection, but if we were to say we want this graph to be a tree, then we cannot have these connections. So that's one. If you've been watching this channel, you'll know there are a lot of things we can do with trees, you know, things like sorting, things like rotations and balancing the tree. So yeah, I won't go into too much detail. If you want to find out more, just, you know, ask me in the comments below and I'll link you to all the videos I've done before. Let's move on. Graphs can be directed or undirected. That is, when we actually connect vertices with edges, we can actually say this edge only goes in one direction and not the other. So if we have a directed graph, then instead of drawing just lines to connect vertices, we'll have to draw them as arrows. So of course, when we're performing our computation, we'll know we can only go in the direction of the arrow and not backwards. What about bipartite graphs? These are interesting. If you have a set of nodes that you can actually separate into two groups, and all the edges in your graph can only go from one group to another, and there should be no edges within the same group. If you can do that, you've got a bipartite graph on your hands. So of course, if we have something like this, it's not a bipartite graph. But if you have something like this, even though there is a connection over here, well, that's not a problem because we can always shift this guy to the other side. So of course the challenge is, you know, it might look like a bunch of points and lines at first, but it may be possible to shuffle things until you get a bipartite graph. So yeah, that's another interesting pattern. Moving on, we have complete graphs, and that is a graph where every single vertex has an edge to every other vertex. So in a very simple graph of three nodes, this is of course trivial, and well, even if we add one more node, it's still not too complicated. But as you can see, as the number of vertices get greater and greater, the number of edges we have to add also get greater. So as you'd imagine, once your graph gets big, if you still want it to be a complete graph, there are going to be many edges. Next up, we can talk about acyclic graphs. If a graph does not contain a cycle, then it's acyclic. As you can see in this graph, it is not acyclic because I have identified a cycle here. So yeah, this might be a little bit non-trivial because finding a cycle isn't always easy, especially if the graph is large. But yeah, just you know, understand the concept that acyclic graphs can be useful. Now, this one is important. If we put together two of the constraints that we've just seen, what we actually get is a directed acyclic graph, also known as a DAG. You also find that DAGs are actually pretty useful. Some of the algorithms we'll see only work on DAGs. Intuitively, you can of course see why you know this makes things easier. If you have an algorithm that is supposed to traverse a graph, if you already knew beforehand that there were no cycles in a the graph, then you won't have to worry about getting in an infinite loop because your algorithm ends up just following a cycle repeatedly. So yeah, these are the types of graphs. In fact, we can say one more thing. 
there are also sparse graphs versus dense graphs. And what that basically means is the number of edges in relation to the number of vertices. If there are just a few edges, it's called a sparse graph. And if there are many edges, then it is a dense graph. And the way we define many is we actually say it's close to the maximum number of edges. That is, a dense graph is either a complete graph or a nearly complete graph in the sense that, you know, you have a complete graph and you take away a few edges. So there you go. These are some patterns, so to speak, that you can see in graphs. Now, I actually wanted to talk about more in this episode, but I realized that I have spent quite a lot of time already. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the rest of the content to the next episode. Let's wrap it up here. Today we've seen different types of graphs and hopefully that gives you a better idea of what you know we will be doing in the future weeks. But that's all there is for this episode. I hope you learned something today, but until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.